Hello and welcome to my keynote presentation at the Virtual E-Learning and Innovative Pedagogies Conference, organized by the Ubiquitous Learning Research Center at the Common Ground Research Networks in Illinois, USA, and hosted by University of the Aegean in Rhodes, Greece. My name is Matthew Montebello, and I'm an academic at the University of Malta within the Department of Artificial Intelligence. My talk today will be about my main research interest within the Department of Artificial Intelligence at the Faculty of ICT at the University of Malta, where I specifically focus on the application of artificial intelligence or AI in education. I will be talking about artificial, in artificial intelligence as applied to education, in particular about ambient intelligent classrooms, which my focus, as you can see, will be in these three areas. So, um, in the last four years, I have been investigating and practicing how an ambient intelligent classroom can be realized with the extensive help of artificial intelligence. To my published research, I have come up to realize that such an amazing concept is possible only through the proper integration and appreciation of three contributing aspects, as you can see in the image below, that factor in the successful accomplishment of deploying such a classroom or a learning space that is ambiently intelligent. But before moving on to, to, to each of these three aspects or three dimensions that contribute to the ambient intelligence classroom, I would like to briefly explain what ambient intelligence is exactly and how it works. So ambient intelligence mainly um, can be described as an environment around us, around everybody that accommodates, that is intelligent, that accommodates the individual needs of each person. So basically, um, it refers to an enclosed environment, could be a room, could be a house, could be a boat, could be a car, could be a plane, could be a, a whole city, could be a whole building, could be a whole country. But obviously, in this case, we're talking about a learning space, so it could be a classroom or a major space. Um, and through the use of technology and AI, artificial intelligence, we can control uh, and keep track of all the people within the, within, the, within, the, within the environment. So using wireless networks, for example, um, such um, technologies as ambient intelligence is ubiquitous um, all over the place. It's pervasive through every activity that is happening within, within that space, but also smart, smart in the way that the data it's collecting, it is processing it and inferring new stuff which will pass on to the user. So typically, um, an ambient intelligent environment has a number of sensors all around the place, mainly to pick up um, data uh, as, imp as input devices, but all the devices and all the stuff within this environment is intelligently tagged and kept track of. So this is what we refer to as IoT or Internet of Things. So every piece of equipment and every piece of furniture and every piece of um, resource within this ambient intelligent environment is kept track of through embedded systems that could be could be any kind of system that are electronically tagged so that the system can figure out where the users are and when where are the where else the rest of the stuff is within the room obviously it will also require some kind of output devices so that the interaction between the user and the environment and the devices that are happening, that are present within the um, ambient intelligence, ambient intelligence environment can interact. So as you can see at the bottom left, the, the, the environment and the sensors and our devices and embedded systems are sensing whatever the user is doing. It can track and figure out one user specifically from a different user it performs the processing or the reasoning, and this is where the artificial intelligent techniques come through, and eventually act on that data, and obviously interact with the user, who will do something else and sense again, reason again, act, and obviously it creates the this, this cycle. As you can also see in the, in the other diagram, um, an ambient intelligent uh, environment has a number of key technologies. Amongst them are, are the hardware, as I said, and it is tagged and kept track of. Um, communication infrastructure, which could be obviously a, a Wi-Fi network, for example. Um, 
interfaces. Some of them could be intuitive human interfaces. Some of them could be a screen, but others could be gestures. Some of them could be um, sound and natural language. So obviously different kinds of interfaces. Uh, it has to be dependable, robust, and secure for the users to use it. And obviously dynamic because we can push in other devices, push in other people, and push in other sensors. And obviously the environment keeps track of whatever is happening within um, within that, that intelligent environment. So that's a bit about um, the ambient intelligence itself. So let's go back to our um, topic, which is a classroom which has ambient intelligence in it. So this is where the title comes, on, comes through, ambient intelligence in a classroom. And as I said, um, through my research, I, I, I proposed this, this technique, eventually did research and actually empirical experiments in real life and, and got results um, to these three dimensions, the education aspect, the social aspect, and the technological aspect. So what, I will, what I'll be doing, I will be going through each of these aspects, explaining in some, in some more detail um, about each one of them, and eventually we will see how they apply when um, integrated together um, to the classroom situation. So first off, um, I'm going to go to the to the social aspect. So um, it's 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 no secret, but we all know that the classroom itself, and students within the classroom, that the educator or educators within the classroom are a small society. So obviously, within the classroom itself, we create a social environment that inherently, like any society, has a number of attributes which we need to keep in mind. These need to be investigated and checked out and obviously apply them to the classroom situation. So they need to be taken into consideration if we really want to successfully apply them to the ambient intelligent classroom. So different persons within the class, you know, we have students, we have the educator and different students with different characteristics, but each person within the class brings their own personality, their individual characteristics that provide multiple dimensions. And this is where one attribute of a classroom is multidimensionality because we have different people. We have also the setup of the classroom. We have other stuff within the classroom. And this gives it a, a numerous or multidimensional aspect within the same environment because the learning environment is what it is. So all these people within the class um, are required to coexist, function effectively and collaborate in order for learning and teaching to be successful. Obviously, all this is happening at the same time. So, so simultaneously, with all these people within it, with, with, the, with the, the way the class is, is configured, the way what's happening in the class, with, with the weather, with the, with the time schedules, with, with the lighting, with the temperature, we have this multi-dimension um, aspect that is happening all at the same time with numerous other things like events, activities, classworks, the bell, requests, students complaining, demands, people commenting, students teasing other students, the behavior of different students. And you can see this complex society, this complex environment, how um, difficult it is to control. And obviously happening now and right away. So this is where the immediacy attribute comes in because it is, a cruci it is crucial to keep in mind that the, the sensors, for example, in an ambient intelligent classroom have to read real time data coming through and react in real time as well. So uh, when this happens in class and whatever the educator and learners are doing and the reaction happens in real time as required uh, by the people who are living in this class. Well, obviously, um, different people, different students, and this brings in the element of unpredictability. As individual persons, traditionally the learners, act and react in numerous unpredictable ways. But the educator has to cater and control while performing all other duties. So take this um, aspect and put it within an electronically controlled class, and unpredictability, you do not know what the students are going to do, where they're going to go, where they're going to reply, and the system has to cater for it as well. So again, we need to think of what happens in a classical, traditional class to the ambient intelligent class. Um, any actions, reactions, events, impulses happening, feedback, behavior, episodes, these are all happening 
in view of everybody. So that's why it's public and everybody is saying what is happening. So if a student uh, answers back to the, to, the, to, the, to the educator and the educator is, gets angry, the other students are experiencing it and, and you know, they're learning not to do this or to do that. So we have positive feedback and, and, and other stuff happening in class. So they need to react, accept, and assume as part of the class procedures or the norms that are built up along the way. And obviously, as time passes by and the students and teacher go through the numerous days and weeks and months through, through the academic year, it builds up a certain history. And this is the, the six characteristics of a traditional class. With all this in mind, we need to keep and think about how this can be transferred to um, an electronically controlled classroom, which is the ambient intelligent classroom. So, um, as I as I show in, in this in this in this in these images, um, we have um, students who are um, aggregating in groups or or interacting together, like in a in a social group. Um, but also it brings in social social networking. So obviously you can have the physical social interaction happening as well as the virtual or electronic social networking happening, which can be put together and combined within the ambient intelligent classroom where the students are in class, but at the same time, they have the electronic devices and can communicate with their own peers within the same space. I'm not talking of a small classroom, but I'm talking of a massive place or a massive learning space, okay? Um, so obviously social networking also falls within the aspect of the social dimension or the social aspect. Good, moving on to the next um, dimension. So um, done the bottom one, the social, we can move to the, to the, to the second aspect, which is most important um, to create this, this ambient intelligent classroom. And this is the educational aspect. Um, in case of education, obviously, it is quite obvious that we have this aspect happening. We're talking about the classroom, and typically, when in a classroom, we're teaching and we're learning. So education is 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 an an essential part. But still, we have to take take note of it. We need to investigate it properly, and even, and obviously, being indispensable, it cannot be ignored for sure. As we are talking about an, a classroom, still. I tend to use the word um, learning space rather than a classroom because um, classrooms are sort of um, were imposed onto society in a, in a controlled way how to um, create um, a learning process going on. But obviously learning can take place anyway, anywhere. So what is important to mention apart from all the educational events that happen within a class is the potential of customized content, for example. So now we can have a system which is electronically tracking every user or every learner, figuring out what the learner is doing or figuring out a learner profile as we build this history along the weeks and, and, and the months within the class. And the electronic system can provide um, newly discovered information about the student's academic progress and um, forwards it to the educator, for example, or um, creates um, customized or tailored content, for example, or um, proposes new, new things to do, or new, or new resources, or particular tasks, or particular content, or recommends a book to read, or suggests a video to watch. So obviously this is the educational part that is important over here. So this is possible through the, what we can say, shadowing of each student within the learning environment. Um, other aspects, as you can see in the diagram, are the analysis of data generated by each student and can be employed to create and refine this learner profile, to differentiate between one user and another user, or between one learner and another learner within the same learning space. So obviously, the education aspect in this case is, is optimized by creating a personalized um, portfolio, electronic portfolio, for each learner as they live through or they or, or they experience um, the, the education process within the ambient intelligent classroom. Another aspect of, of education is our, our learning analytics, for example. So this is an important concept that we'll see in the next um, dimension as well. That's through the use of AI and the collection of, of learning data and the analysis of learning data helps to optimize the learning process. 
within the same environment. So obviously, um, the educational um, the educational the education aspect is taking advantage of the social aspect, but also needs the third aspect, which will follow shortly. So um, again, um, the, the a cycle of data being produced by, by the learner himself, creating this learner profile, eventually figuring out or inferring or um, mining, data mining, new information about, it, about the learner provides feedback to the educator, to the learner, through, to the system that will actually feed through the cycle and keeps on refining the user profile. So um, customization, learning analytics, are two major aspects of, of the educational aspect. Um, moving on to um, the third aspect, so that was the social aspect, the educational aspect, and as I said, the third pillar that is very important to put these together is the technological aspect. Um, technology uh, is so important because within an electronically um, controlled environment which is being used for education so this is where the, 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 the technology and the education integrate together um, all aspects of technology needs, need to be taken into into consideration but but not just the technology itself um, uh, we, we can we can think of technology as in as in sensors for example um, cameras speakers microphones projectors um, tablets, laptops, and, and these kind of sensors, for example, but as well as, uh, so we, 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 call, we could consider those the hardware part of technology, but also we can think of technology as the software part of technology. So we have, where we have um, programs, software, mainly artificial intelligence software or machine algorithms to process the collected data about the, about the, the learner and then fear new information in the form of assessments, academic recommendations, um, content suggestions, and other information extracted from the same data generated by the same learner within the environment. The use of networks obviously provide an important feature that goes hand in hand with the social aspect to provide educational benefits. So in this case, we have numerous examples of how technology can be employed within the classroom or within education. The top left shows uh, the automatic, automated grading and reviewing. So this could be a student interacting with a, a virtual learning environment within the same learning environment, the physical learning environment, and automatically it's getting reviews back. It can be done by the, by the educator, but could be done by the peers as well. Um, top right we have the learning analytics, which again is, is a process that cycles through um, through preparing content and material and, and um, delivery of educational content to reach specific goals within, for each individual student and implement these through the delivery of the content, maybe through some online tests or through some um, other way of assessment so that the, the system can analyze and figure out in fear process this information so that it can improve both its delivery as well as the educational knowledge of, of the learner. Um, another nice aspect of technology within the educational camp is real-time analytics. So obviously it's offering the student and the learner for decision support um, of the different assessment happening. In this case, we're talking strictly about formative assessment. So not talking about summative of exams. So as the student is interacting with the, within the learning environment and creating knowledge and giving feedback and trying out and experimenting and um, doing stuff, interacting, presenting um, within the learning environment, the ambient intelligence sensors are figuring out what the student is doing, both from a physical point of view, pro secondly, from a, from a virtual point of view, so that um, the student doing these uh, knowledgeable things, um, assessment is happening in real time. And the student himself or herself can see what kind of values um, are, are, are being gained through real-time analytics. Um, the bottom right diagram shows 
the use of technology in a physical sort of hardware point of view, where we have embedded systems to, to obviously facilitate human computer interactions, which are, as I said, pervasive um, within every aspect within the learning environment, as well as ubiquitous um, together with um, AI that is taking advantage of these devices and the data that they, that they are creating. Um, right, so moving on. In this way, I have covered the, the, the three aspects. I have presented the three aspects of the ambient digital classroom, but what is, what is important at this point is to see how all three aspects are so important and so specific in their own right, how nice it is to see how one aspect interacts with the other aspect, like education with technology, how te technology with, with the social, and how the social aspect with the, with the, with the with the, with the technology, as with, with the education as well. But even more interesting would, would be to see how all these three integrate together within this ambient intelligent classroom. So this is where I um, performed some experiments. So what, what happened um, in the last three years, um, some of my courses were students uh, volunteered to, to test the ambient internet environment, we set up a, a learning space where students can, could obviously roam throughout this learning space where we had different areas where students can, for example, um, stop for uh, an individual um, following some resource or some material on their own or decide to work in a group work on another side of the, of the learning environment or, the, or decide to um, present um, some information they've been creating to some of their friends or to the whole class and so on and so forth. They've been doing some crafts or, or venturing, doing some, some other discovery. So obviously we have different areas. You can see in the top right um, uh, diagram where we're obviously away from the traditional classroom to a much more um, sort of fun area where, where, where students can um, still experience a learning process in different, in, different, in different ways. So we talk about ambient intelligent learning hubs and flexible environments. Obviously these environments can be moved around, um, obviously using enhanced pedagogical agents, which would be electronically um, enabled through the same virgin, virtual, virtual learning environment. As you can see um, at, at the bottom right, we have this cycle where we have this learner profile being generated, which provides information for um, recommendation capabilities, as well as for extraction or text mining for new information that eventually through different learning analytics and functionalities um, and these pedagogical agents can provide new information uh, for the system to the educator as well as the, the, to the learner to improve their education and their knowledge. Um, in the, in the bottom left is the system we were using as a virtual learning environment, which is which is called which was which is called Scholar, and this integrates a, a number of aspects that I've been talking about. So it integrates the, the the physical with the virtual within the same learning environment. Um, so if I had to go into more detail about the integration of these three aspects and they how and how they come together in reality. The three aspects come together within a learning space. And this is the learning space I was talking about that will transform this traditional classroom to a set of different areas where students can follow a variety of educational process. As I said, alone, in groups, or in a classical teacher-student situation, for example. So the technology surrounding these learners within, within, within the space, you can have Wi-Fi, you can have sensors, you can have people moving around. Learners anywhere within this learning space or the different areas, as I said, they could be in a group on one side of the classroom, they could be individual in different compartments, for example, or they could be doing some other work within the resource center, within resource area, within the same environment. Information is being generated, data is being generated and being collected. It is done to provide content, recommend resources, suggest activities, and process it to push it back within the cycle of events. So we have this 
um, ecology of data, of information, of educational stuff, um, cycling through specific, tailored, and customized for the individual individual needs of of the learner. So it is, it, it is a sort of ideal situation where we have one to one interaction uh, between the educational aspects and the educator with the individual students. So this provides excellent opportunities to take full advantage of the electronic medium. So as it overlaps with the physical learning spaces by benefiting and ex exploiting the affordances that we can extract from the different media as well from the electronic way of doing things. Um, these affordances could be ubiquitous learning, so they can learn anywhere within the learning environment, even away from this learning environment, but specifically much more focused within this learning environment. They could be doing active knowledge making, they could be working on some crafts, but they, they can be producing a presentation or, 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 or an essay. So it, it is obviously um, actively creating knowledge, but they could be also, for example, using different information they found online through all other resources and creating knowledge through, through, through the electronic means. And um, they could be giving feedback either in person or through the network, for example, or a social network. So we can have recursive feedback or feedback upon feedback, which, which, uh, as, which helps us to be, helps students to be critical thinkers, for example, but also through, through the use of, of multimodal multimedia, they can give multimodal meeting and they use different media as required, depending on what they want to express themselves. Um, so obviously we use the specific media depending um, characteristically on what I want to um, pass on as information. And they can work in groups so we can have collaborative managers. They can do it physically within the room or they can do it um, electronically on as you know, we have uh, group meetings um, over the, the social network, for example. And this will help you think about what others are thinking. So we have metacognitive processes happening within the same, within, within the same environment. Um, but obviously one of the most important and strong uh, attributes is this customized or differentiated learning that is possible through the electronic means of um, shadowing or and profiling each learner as we go along. And this is all possible um, through the ambient intelligent environment. So we have at the top left, we have this personalized learning. Um, so the student owned learning, obviously, it's presented to the individual student and can do it anywhere, anytime, the, the ubiquitous thing. Um, obviously, it's based on the competency of, of, the stu of the specific student. And this provides um, is a source of, of deeper learning. So we have this knowledge, the skills, and dispositions to succeed in college and career and in civic life. So obviously, um, I've gone through, gone through th these, these four diagrams, and as they come together and bring together the three aspects or the three pillars um, of, of the ambient intelligent classroom. So, so these three pillars, again, to, to summarize, they bring the educational aspect, the, the teaching part, the content part, the, they bring the social aspect of the physical classroom that we're used to. They bring them together through the use of technology. Technology being the hardware, technology being the software, especially the true AI. And the three together combined within the same learning environment, not, I'm not mentioning classes or classrooms now, within the, with the same learning environment, they um, enable to create an ambient intelligent classroom. Um, so this brings me to the end of my presentation, where I have gone through these three contributing aspects of the ambient intelligent classroom that factor in, factor in its successful realization. Um, students who experience this, this environment, where we're, we're enjoying the environment, um, enjoyed the, the, the learning process, and felt that the experience was not only educational, but also um, intuitive and very much related to what they do in real life. Um, thank you very much. Um, this, is, this is my work and, um, in collaboration with the University of Illinois 
with Professor Cook and Professor Francis, and much more information and detailed information about the ambient intelligence classroom can be found in a, in a, in a monograph um, published by Springer, which is entitled The Ambient Intelligence Classroom. Thank you very much.